Hello, welcome back again to Painting with Artie Julie. Today we're going to look at a still life um, painting. We're going to look at some fruit. I'm going to do it in a slightly abstract way, just doing it as a, a bit of a design. So we're going to draw it out first of all on a scrap piece of paper and then transfer it onto watercolour paper and then I'll show you how to paint it. Okay, let's get going. So with this painting, I was trying to find um, a different way of doing fruit. Um, whenever you start doing watercolour painting, you, you try to set up a little still life and do um, a painting of fruit and flowers and things like that. And I thought, rather than just do the usual sort of arrangement, a couple of apples and a banana, I thought I'd try and make it slightly abstract by looking down on the fruit and um, trying to do an arrangement with it. So I've drawn out a little arrangement. We've got a banana, a couple of ap an apple cut in half, some segments of limes, another part of an apple, another apple here, a lemon, um, part of an orange and a bigger orange here. So I've drawn those out um, onto a little um, piece of A4 uh, paper, which then I can scribble on the back of that with just a soft graphite pencil, um, put it down onto a piece of paper, my watercolour paper, and go back over it. What you want to do with watercolour paper is try to rub out as little as possible on there. So I tend to draw everything out on a scrap piece of paper first and transfer it onto paper. But you can make your own arrangements with this. You don't have to use my arrangement here. You could use vegetables and use peppers and cabbage leaves and things, all sorts of different things. Mushrooms would look really nice with this sort of design idea rather than just trying to um, do it very realistically. We can just take part of it as realistic but then design it. So how do we go from here? How do we then we get that into a nice little painting? So once I've got that, I've taped around the edges of my watercolour paper to reduce the size of it a bit and that will give me a nice clean border when I've finished as well when I take that off. So just taped around there. So when I'm doing fruit and, and doing this way of painting or painting fruit generally, what it's very use, useful to do is put the shadows in first. So with all these objects here, I'm going to just put the, the shadows in first. This means you can model the shadows um, onto damp paper so you get lots of shaping to it. Um, so we're going to start off with just a little bit of blue onto this apple here to give it the shadows and the shapes into that. So I've mixed a, a puddle of ultramarine blue. It works better with ultramarine blue than any other colour. So I've got a little puddle of that here waiting to go. And what I'm going to do is carefully dampen that apple all over. I'm going to leave the stem and I'm just going to carefully dampen this apple, avoiding the other bits. Paint will always run to wherever, wherever you put water. So I'm going to put it over here and just avoid the stem. Check your, your paper, look at, the, look at it from the side and you'll see where it's shining, where the paper's hitting it and where it's not. I'm going to take a, a medium sized brush, something like an eight round and then I'm just going to put the shadows in. This is just ultramarine blue. So you wrap it round the, the apple here. So it's got a shadowy side to it here. Where it's curling under. Um, around here, keeping it neat up to the edges. Curling it round here. And then I can just clean my brush and tickle it onto this edge here and you'll find that the shadows just blend and blur. Because the paper's wet, it softens this edge completely around that edge of the apple there. So it just softens it out and makes it blend out. So I'm just cleaning my brush and letting that, encouraging that to fade away into the water I've put there. I want a little bit of shadow just in this corner as well. So I'm just putting that where the, where the little um, stem comes out. I'm just putting a little bit of blue in there and again just clean my brush and just encouraging it to feather out into that water. That make this stronger or weaker. I can blend it, I can manipulate it while it's still damp like this. I can put a bit more shadow towards the bottom if I need to, just to make it curl under a bit more, but keeping it this bluey colour to start with for this particular one and then just blend it out. As soon as it starts to dry, you've got to stop. It won't blend in then. So just letting that sit there. I'm going to go around and do some shadows, perhaps on this um, half a lime here. This is just going to go um, across this again. Now this is a slightly sharper shadow, 
but even so I'm just going to dampen it first just be careful you don't touch the apple otherwise it will run back into it so just dampen it don't soak it just dampen it slightly and then oops sorry I just dropped my pencil on the floor and then just put that shadow over the one half of it it might be safer to work with something that's not actually touching each other rather than the one that I'm just doing there. Just over half of that where the shadow of the apple is going to go over the lime there. Um, what else needs a shadow? This has got a, um, a shadow to it. This is a little lemon we've got in here. So again, we're just going to put on a little bit of water onto this. If you don't want to use a mop brush, you can just use a big round brush, a soft brush. But I like my little mop brush here and again I'm sticking to the ultramarine blue because this allows me to flood other colours over the top of it when this is dry. So I'm just going to put that bluey shadow in, Let's make that a little bit stronger and I'm just going to put this underneath here and then I'm going to dot it back into that because these lemons are quite a speckly skin to them so as it comes up into the little lemon, I'm just going to dot it out there so it blurs up into that lemon and just looks a little bit more interesting into that background there. So just fade it away as it comes up the lemon there to give me a different effect slightly. Just a few more across the lemon itself there. And this will just flood with colours. These, when you put yellow over it, because it's blue here, it will go a green colour. So it will look quite natural when you finish there. So I'm just working around this, putting a few more shadows in a, in a few more different places. Um, again, we've got a couple of little limes down here. It's got a big banana there. So we're going to put um, a little bit of shadow onto these two down here because they're underneath this banana. If you are putting, doing a design, if you're putting something like a, a strong shape of a banana in, Make sure it has a smiley face. It looks a very sad picture if it droops the other way. So it's quite a little trick to it. It's just put a, a little smiley face in there. And again with these, because they will go green with a bit of yellow over the top, we can just put the blue into that just to give it the shadow. And again, stop it as it comes out into the light. And the same with this one. Just the shadow onto that. And stop it as it comes out into the light there. So I'm just drying my brush. These two are just dampened first to allow me to put paint on and take it off again. Um, this is another little apple here. So I'm just going to put it, because it's only, I'm only going to put it down the edge of the apple where the skin is and not over the cut part of it where it's open. I'm just going to go on to dry paper with that and just put a little bit of the blue on that bottom edge there into that skin there because it's a little fiddly to do if it's onto damp there because it's such a tiny little bit it's not really worth it. Um, the banana um, and the orange I might make just a slightly different shade of uh, bluey green for the banana just to give it um, it's probably a little bit too greeny if I just use a blue on its own there. So I'm just going to dampen it first. So I'll use my mop brush, I think, for that one. But I'll just put in, instead of just the blue, i just add a tiny weeny bit of yellow to it to already make it a slightly greenier tinge for this one because it's such a distinct shape and colour. So I'm just dampening it, make sure there's no puddles onto it. So it's damp, not soaking wet. And again, just think about where the shadow is going to be onto this one. Um, I'm just going to go down here. It's just a slightly different shade of blue. It's got a tiny touch of yellow to it to make it already a little bit more of a greeny colour. Onto that one side of the banana and then again up to the end here where it will get a, a stronger shade eventually. And again, just a little, because the banana will curve both ways. So you want a little bit of colouring onto the other side of it as well. And perhaps just around that edge. 
Um, what else have we got? Don't need to do those because they're out into the light. This orange will probably need a little bit of shadow. So again, I'm going to use the ultramarine blue, but this time I'm going to put a little bit of um, orangey red with it, perhaps a little bit of burnt sienna with that, just to take, so it's not quite so blue as all the others. So a little bit more bluey grey colour, so we've got that mixed up ready and waiting. So again, just wet that. But an orange has got a speckly look to it, like the lemons. It isn't a smooth look to the skin like the apples are. So I'm just going to put some of this speckly shadow down to the one side of that. And into that, so it's a little bit more of a grey colour. Perhaps I'll just put a little bit more of the burnt sienna into it to make it a little bit more orangey. It's uh, blowing a gale here today, so you might be able to hear the wind rattling outside, but it's a perfect day for painting. If the weather's bad like this, sit in and do some painting. It's lovely to, to do. But just taking the surplus puddles out of that. Last little one, there's another apple here, or part of an apple that I can see here. Um, so again, I'm going to go back to the blue with that one, make sure those are dry, and then I'm just going to dampen that. And just put a little bit of the blue onto that one edge to make it look a little bit more round as it's bending round that edge and tucking away there. i just clean my brush and take that so it feathers into that water and just gives me that nice round look to it. Okay, so I think you can start to see the shaping coming up to those already and you can re-wet them and put some more shading in if you want to but I think that's ready to start now putting the colours on. Got to let it dry completely but we can start on one that's already dry and just gradually work through the um, the different segments now as we work as we go through it. So, okay, these are nice and dry now. So now we can start working and putting the colours on top of this. So we've got the shading, the shape to it. Very useful with watercolours to put the shading in first because that will always shine through. So you don't have to work so hard when you put the colours into it to get the shape into it. You can start with whichever piece of fruit you want to first, but I'm going to start with this lemon up here. So I'm going to take some clean water and I'm going to dampen this lemon over the shadow as well. And I'm going to put water on because this will help the paint to flow. But I'm going to leave the highlight, which is here, just dot some water onto that and so leave some bits dry. But most of the other uh, part we're going to wet. We're going to take a, a little bit of lemon yellow, which is a very useful one, the pale bright yellow. And we're just going to paint that over the majority of that it goes over the shadow as, as well so you can see it goes a nice greeny colour and but dot it into the middle of the lemon because as the skin is all crinkly on there it'll just catch some light in some places so I'm going over the rest of the shadow again where it's going over the shadow we have dotted it on it will go a greeny colour and then the other part I'll just get a bit more paint on my brush it's going to be a nice bright yellow where it goes onto the paper there and then dot it back into that. While that's still slightly damp, I'm going to get some stronger cadmium yellow and just get so a little bit of cadmium yellow on its own here, just make a little bit of a puddle of that and dot that in as well. Dot it into where the shadowy parts are so you get this little bit of a darker shade which helps to make it again look a bit more rounded so anywhere where you've got the bluey colour or the bluey green colour as it is now just dot a bit of that yellowy cadmium yellow into that as well so that's your lemon nearly finished it's just got to have the little centre put into it this painting doesn't come together until you put the background in so don't panic at this stage and thinking that looks rubbish because it'll be all right on the night it'll be okay when we get to the end of it so I'm going to let that one dry, so working away from that, that part, I might do the orange in the same sort of way. I've got a bit of cadmium red and um, cadmium yellow to give me one shade of 
orange and I've got another one now here which I'll just make it a little bit just to the side of it a little bit more orangey by putting a little bit more red in so a couple of different shades there same sort of thing I'm just going to clean brush dampen it all over but as it gets towards the highlight area which is about here somewhere I'm just going to dot the water on so I'm going to just dot it on around here it's a bit of grubby water but it'll be fine just dotting the water on around there the rest of it I'm just going to cover as I would do normally just dampening it so it's not soaking wet just slightly damp I'm only using a, a medium sized brush to dampen it with so now this orangey colour I'm going to put over most of this just make sure it's fairly strong go over your shadow again that you put in there because this will shine through and eventually look like the all as if it's part of one thing just going into this keep your yellowy orange on there first and then as you get to where the highlights are dot it in so if it catches the water in some places it'll be it will run but then in other places you'll leave it nice and bright and white to give you the speckly it's a bit of a puddle of water there let me just take that out to get the speckly look of the um, orange the skin of the orange keep going round keep going round and then just before that dries out and finishes make sure you've got this stronger brighter orangey colour so and we just put that into where the shadowy bits are, just make it a little bit more vibrant in its colours there to give you the texture and the colour of the orange. A few little of those dots. Dot it in for this one so it's not particularly smooth, you're just dotting it round to make it an orangey shade and shape. So that's those two done. Um, we're going to start doing some of the slices now because this is all wet around there so as we're doing the um, orangey colour I might as well do the orangey slices that we've got up here. So with the slices the segment parts, the little bits where they, um, the actual fruit is, we're just going to use these two shades of orange um, onto dry paper and you're just going to dash them, little dashes onto dry paper right into to going towards the centre of the orange. So put a few little dashes on, um, just bring them in, this will give you the inner segments of the orange. Get a little bit of your other orangey colour, dash a few of those in as well, so you've got two different shades of that coming in there and leave some little white bits showing through because that will be the part in between the segments of the orange and also some little um, little gaps in between them as well, I forgot what they're called now, but they're little bits of skin in between the, the orange itself. So I'm just going round, dashing those in, a couple of different shades in there, don't get them too close together as I've just done there because otherwise you lose that little bit of light shining through there. Dot it in, dash it in onto dry paper, it's got to be dry paper for that little bit. So you're alternating, it's quite a good exercise for alternating between when you put it onto damp paper, when you put it onto dry paper, you want texture you put your paint on to dry if you want it to blend you put it onto damp paper or wet paper put a few more dashes of that in a few more dashes of that one coming around here uh, let's just bring it up to the edge of those little grapes there um, now that's just done the sections in between the orange we need to put the little skin on the outside edge so for this particular bit make sure that's dry on there just take a little bit of clean water just a, a normal small round brush and just going to dampen that edge dampen that edge don't go near the little segments on the inside so just dampening that and then a little bit of your yellowy colour just towards that outer edge let it just run into that water just painting it round that outer edge there, let it run into that water so it comes back and then get your more orangey red, that very strong, a lot more red into this one and again just the outside edge of that one now, just run that around the outside for the 
for the skin on the outside edges and that should give you your orange segment. Um, as we're doing the segments now, I might as well do the little lime segments that we've got here because they'll give you a nice little colour. So a similar sort of thing with those. We're just going to use a very pale yellowy green. That's um, You can use either a, a lemon yellow and ultramarine blue or um, a cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. Just a couple of different shades of that. And again, we're just going to dash them on in the direction of the little bits of the fruit there into the centre, towards the centre, each one of those. Try and use a couple of different colours. This one's going over that shadow that we previously put on there. And again, with that one. And then a little bit of darker bluey green into that as well to give them a bit of variation into that. They're quite pale, so don't go too strong on those colours. And again, the same thing with this, just for the, the outer skin here. We're just going to dampen that edge and just get a little bit of the green. It's a bit small to put the two colours in, but we'll just put a little bit of the limey green on the outside edge so it bleeds into that water, so you're not painting all the way into the water, just a little way into it to give it that look of the skin around the outside edges. I'm going to continue to do a few more of these. So if you want to catch up with me in a minute, I'm just going to do a few more of these limes around here. So I've just carried on and done all these little limes in exactly the same way as I did the orange and this one here, just dashing on little bits onto dry paper. Then once those are dry, dampening that edge and just running a little bit of the colour around the outside so that bleeds in on those, but it's nice and dry on that one. Let's have a look at the banana. We've got the, the couple of colours here. Banana, yellow. A nice cadmium or mid-yellow for that one. Um, Perhaps a little bit of lemon yellow as well to give it a different shade. So I've got a puddle of that, quite strong with those. Um, and a little bit of burnt umber, just to go over the shadowy bits. Oh, put, sorry, to put the little spots on in some places, because I always have these little spots on. Again, we're going to dampen this banana um, all over, just using, again, not a, not a particularly big brush, just a medium-sized brush, because we don't want it soaking wet because it will just run everywhere. So we just want to dampen it carefully, going over the shadows that we've previously put on there, down into those, between carefully putting that water on, because paint will run to wherever you've put water. Take any puddles out of it. Oops, got a little smudge there. And then start with your palest colour first. So a little bit of the pale yellow, just bring it up, sweep it up in the direction of the banana, right up to the top there, perhaps the other side of that as well. Leave the bit in the middle without paint on because that will be your highlight. That again helps to give you the shape to these um, bits of fruit and things. He's putting the highlights in. In with the stronger yellow, perhaps down the sides here. Go over that shadow. So we're just building up the shape of the banana. And again, round here. Make this one coming down this side of it. So this is your stronger cadmium or medium yellow. I don't get too hung up on the names of paints. I just tend to think, well, which looks right, rather than trying to think, oh, it's, I haven't got a cadmium yellow, therefore I can't do the painting. Just use something that's similar to it, or a medium yellow, that would be fine. Um, just a little bit more in that corner there, I think. So with that, I'm just going to take some very strong, just swap to a slightly smaller brush now. Little brush here. And I'm just going to put some nice bits of strong burnt umber in to give you these little bits of brown markings. And while it's still damp, so it runs and bleeds into it a bit. Just those little markings that you get on a banana. And just make it look a little bit more realistic. Make sure that's stronger than your other colours, otherwise you'll get little white cauliflowers into it few little dots here and there and then just a little bit on the end and a little bit on that end as well to give you the ends of the banana. Oops, it's a little bit too strong there. Never mind, they're all different. So that's your banana done. As i just thrown another brush on the floor, i just uh, leave that for the moment just to take that little bit out there. 
So now we can move on to um, another piece of fruit. So what have we got left now? We've got the apples which need doing. Um, so we're going to use, I'll just put that little bit of yellow in there while it's still done. Um, we're just going to mix up the colours for the apples. We're going to have those lovely um, russety red apples. So we're going to need um, a little bit of the cadmium yellow again, which I've got a little bit here. Mix a puddle of that up. Cadmium red, a nice orangey red. If you haven't got a cadmium red, it doesn't really matter. You can use um, um, a viridian perhaps. And then you want a bit of Elysian crimson or a purpley red of some sort. So the each of these colours has got to be sequentially stronger than the last one that we're putting in here. So we just mix those colours up and again clean brush, a little bit of clean water. Um, and then we're going to just dampen this apple all over. My brush isn't that particularly clean as you can see there but it should be right over the shadows and this time we've just got to put the paint on while this is slightly damp not soaking wet so I'm just going to take the puddle out of it dry the brush on a bit of clean tissue and then it's just slightly damp not soaking wet so it's over the shadows as well now this time as we paint these colours in Quite strong with some of these colours. We're going to go in with the yellow and we're going to paint it in the direction from the core outwards so it's going round the apple. So we're just painting it there. Leave little highlights. It's going to be a little bit of highlight here and a little bit of a highlight there. So we'll leave those. We're just painting it round the apple. So this will give you the direction of the, the, um, the grain or the patterning on the apple. I don't know what they call it on apples. They call it a the markings, let's call it the markings, I think that's probably the most suitable word for it. The markings of the apple, so I'm just putting that yellowy on. Always start with your paler colours first, making sure this is slightly damp as you work, so they blend in and merge, going down around the apple here. And then we'll perhaps put a bit, just a little bit more yellowy colour in. And then we'll go in for the nice orangey red in between that. Again, over your shadowy bits, Again, keeping those going in the direction of the shape of the apple. So gradually build up a bit more of the orangey reds. Leaving this bit where there's a bit of a highlight. It should be slightly damp. Mine looks like it's gone a little dry there in the middle. But we'll just dampen that slightly in a moment. Just to keep that so it blends in. Again, around this one, a bit more of the orangey red around this side. Coming up, up from the bottom or down from the top, whichever way is easier for you to bring that around here. That should give you some nice little bits of shaping. In with a stronger um, purpley red, your Elysian Crimson, this should be slightly stronger and again the same sort of things Make sure you go over the shadowy areas a little bit more with that colour to bring it deeper into that shape of the apple here. I think it's magical the way that watercolours work and the shadows become part of the object. Very clever. Watercolours are translucent. It allows you to have the shape of the apple, but by putting the shadows on first, it then becomes part of the colouring that you've already put on there. Get that a little bit darker down in that corner. Carefully round my little bits of the grapes that are left there. I'm just going to soften some of these areas, just going to clean my brush, clean water, just a slightly damp brush, not wet brush, otherwise it will bleed back into it too far, but just dampen that slightly and that will just give me my softer highlights back in there to blend those out. If it's too wet you'll get, as I've just done, a cauliflower coming back into it. But again this one, just put the water on here and just bring it up to that edge and just blend that slightly so the colours just merge very, very gently into those areas there. Last little bit on that one. Down there, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to do the same on this apple down here having this going in a slightly different way. 
So just dampening it first and then putting the colours into it. So again, if you want to catch up with me in a few moments, just while I paint this one. Okay, so we've, I've just finished this little apple as well to give you the same sort of shaping as this one. This one where it's uh, cut in half, what we're going to do with that is dampen the inside of the apple, not the skin, we're just doing this bit first of all. Again, don't make it soaking wet, take the puddles out of it so it's not soaking wet. And a little bit of weak burnt sienna, reddish brown colour, just to give you the look of it just being cut through. And then I'm going to let that dry before I put the skin on the outside edges. You might want a bit of yellow ochre as well, just to give you a little bit of change of colour. So that just blends and blurs very gently into that, so it's not completely um, white in the inside there. We'll come put the pips in in a minute, but just a little bit of that colouring into it. Okay, just onto that white stamp paper. If it's gone dry around here, in fact, what you could probably do once that is dry, instead of dampening that area first, as we've done with those skins, because it's only small, if we just paint that yellowy colour over that skin, around that edge, over the shadow that we've put in there, a little bit of your cadmium red onto that as well. Don't worry too much about getting it into the direction of the the uh, markings on the skin because it's too small to see really. And we'll just have a little bit of the colouring into that. Follow it round there. Make sure this is dry otherwise it will just bleed into it for this one. And again just a very fine edge around that side and into that part around here. It'd be quite nice if I can just get a little bit of red around the edge of that as if it's the skin just showing through there. Okay, I'll leave that to dry before I put the pips and things like that into it. And we can do um, a few little grapes. So the grapes are quite fun to do. You want a couple of different colours of uh, purpley colour. Elysian Crimson and Ultramarine Blue mixed to give you, gives you a purpley colour. Um, and then you want a slightly stronger one, same mix again, but just a slightly different shade of it. Um, the grapes have got soft highlights on rather than bright highlights. If you want a very bright highlight, you leave it dry. But for the soft ones, you just dampen one grape at a time. Just do one little grape, dampen it, take the puddle out of it, in with your different shades of purple. Leave a little area without paint on in the middle there to give you a highlight or two. And then just tickle in a little bit of the stronger purpley colour just a little bit of that stronger bluey purple colour. I'll get a little bit of that, there we are, into some areas on that to, to give it a bit of shaping. And that's all you do with those grapes. If you want a bright, strong highlight on there, you just put your first colour on um, onto dry paper if you want to. And while that's still wet, get a slightly stronger purpley colour and just drop in a few little extra darker purpley bits into that as well just to give it a bit of shaping. So with these now I'm just going to put, you can see the difference between the, the slightly blurred highlight, a softer one and a shiny highlight. I'll do most of them with the blurred um, highlights. So just dampening those, take the puddle out of it so it's not soaking wet, purpley colour into most of it. So you get a little bit of a reddish purple to start with. Leave a little patch with a highlight onto it and then round the outside edges of that. Just dot in while it's still damp a little bit of the darker purple or stronger purple to give it a little bit of shaping. I'm going to continue just to finish off these little grapes there so I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, I'll just whack these on. And then it's, we're nearly done with this. It's just going to be the background. In fact, I'll do this a lot quicker. And just a few stems. I'll just put the stems in and I'll do the background bit. And it's done. OK, so I've just been adding these little grapes as we go through here. Um, all we need to do now is put the stems on and the background. That background really pulls it all together. So with a little bit of, um, perhaps a little bit of burnt sienna, we can start with that, putting these little pips onto here once they're dry, just do a little 
circle of the burnt sienna. Oops, perhaps I need a slightly smaller brush for that. It's a little bit fiddly with that brush. That's better. So this is now onto dry paper for these little bits and all you're doing is just putting in the little shapes here. Um, perhaps a little bit of burnt umber at the bottom of those to give it a little bit of a shape to it. The stem, we can add in a little bit of a green stem there perhaps to start with, with a little bit of burnt umber to the one side of it. This is just onto dry paper just to give you the shaping to it. Um, this stem, same sort of thing, a little bit of two tones if possible, a bit of green to one side and then a little bit of dark brown to the other side, letting them run in together. So that's your little stem coming in here. These are quite good fun to do, where the little pip is in the lemon and the same on the orange. I might do that with a bit more greeny coloured. Just a little star, a little cross onto those. A little bit of burnt umber in there as well to give it a bit more shape. That one hasn't got any. A few little stems, perhaps just a bit of burnt umber for these little stems coming up here. Oh, I don't know where that stem's coming from. Never mind, we'll have one there anyway. Um, you only need a couple of those on there. And now we're ready for the background. With the background, I mean, you could leave it like that, but it really gives it some punch if we just go in between all these gaps onto dry paper with a nice strong dark colour. Now you can use a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt umber which will give you a strong dark colour um, or you can use a Payne's grey or in this case I've just got a little puddle of indigo on the go uh, just carefully around the edges here and this covers up all your wobbly bits on the bit of the fruit that you've been doing here and just fills in this background. Just put a little puddle on there and drag the puddle out so it'll go on a little bit more richly if you do that rather than trying to put it onto dry very dry paper so always put a puddle on and drag a puddle around and this builds up you might find you need two coats of this to give it its depth i'm just going to bring that around that corner as well um, i'm just doing the outside a bit so i should have started this side because i want to lean on that so let's just do this side now and then come back into that area in a minute I'm just using a small brush for this, but I think perhaps a slightly bigger one will be quicker and easier. So it's a nice big, try and keep that puddle nice and consistent. Just drag the puddle around. So the puddle will always be towards the bottom to start at the, but don't paint all around the edges and try and fill it in. Just fill it in as you go up to the edges. Just over that up very slightly, it doesn't matter. Bringing that puddle down down to the bottom here and then when you finish one little section just dry your brush take any little puddles that are sitting there take those out so you get a nice consistent colouring with it just going to go in between those and into that little triangle and just gradually filling that in and that's what I'm going to do throughout the rest of the picture so if you want to catch up with me in a second I'll have done those and we'll be nearly done then Right, so I'm just finishing these last few little bits around here, just putting this dark in between it. Um, and then it's up to you really whether you want another coat over that, but you need to let it dry first before you put the another coat over the background. But we're nearly there, just this last little bit. Just use a small brush for the difficult bits. And then take that little blob off there. And there we have it, our fruit as a little design. I'm just going to take this masking tape off because I put that around the edges here first and it should help to give a little border. And if you're pulling masking tape off, put it at 90 degrees away from you so it doesn't rip the paper. And um, we'll see what is revealed with the little design. So just another way of doing, oops, um, fruit without having to do it as quite a staid um, picture and a good way of learn, learning how to paint fruit and yet putting it into a slightly more modern arrangement. Oops, 
you know, make sure it comes away at 90 degrees. And there we go. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed doing that. Um, a bit of fun and a bit of a different way of painting fruit, I hope. Um, if you need the instruction sheet, or if you'd like the instruction sheet and a drawing to help you work this out, don't forget to go onto my website, artyjulie.com, and even subscribe to the YouTube channel, artyjulie.com, for more workshops like this. Thank you. Bye.